Hey everybody, welcome to another video looking at the Cohesity data platform. I'm Alistair Cook and today we'll be looking at the ability to back up an Office 365, in particular an Exchange environment, from your Cohesity platform, whether you deploy it on-premises or in the cloud. The time that I'm making the video, the feature's not actually directly available in the UI without some work with the support team, but very shortly there'll be a release where this is actually in full production at the moment, it's, it's limited access. Here's my normal lab environment. Uh, I actually had to rebuild it because I had some storage problems in the lab and I chose to rebuild uh, this backup appliance because I didn't, <laughs> didn't really need the history in my lab environment. Uh, so it's not using a huge amount of space and as you can see the, the uh, storage reduction on the right hand side is showing not many days when I've been actually reducing storage. But nonetheless here it is backing up my six machines and um, storing uh, several backup points. I've got everything running on the gold level of protection at the moment. Before we can add Office 365 in here we need to grant our admin account in Office 365 it's an additional access and so if I pop across here into my Exchange admin console on Office 365 I'm in the permission section and I have created this admin role co called Cohesity Access. Now I just followed Chris Colotti's blog post about how to do this and I'll link that blog post in the description and in my blog post about this as well. But on the right hand side you can see that there are just five roles assigned uh, and particularly uh, application and impersonation and access to mailbox is kind of important. And then the only user ID that is a member of this role is my own user ID. And so I'm going to use my account in order to access Office 365. There's only two accounts in, the, in here, that's mine and my wife's. So back in the Cohesity dashboard, I'm going to come into the protection and the sources. Now I created that uh, admin role and assigned it to my user ID some time ago and so the replication of that role has completed. Uh, you will need to wait for that replication because Murphy's Law applies. The controller that your uh, appliance talks to will be the most out of date one. This is, this is the way Murphy's Law works and so you need to wait 15 minutes for that replication to occur. So I'm going to come in here and register an Office 365 service and all I need is the username and password of my Office 365 account. So I'll just pop those in. And click register. Goes out, talks to Office 365 and then does an inventory and finds the source. And so now we can see in the Office 365 source there is just one account listed, zero protected and two unprotected items. In order to protect them I'm going to create a new protection job. We can see in the protection jobs I just have my Demitask job which currently backs up my vSphere environment. So I'm going to create a new job by protecting an Office 365 resource. It's going to be quite a long list of things that we can protect out of Office, out of uh, Cohesity. Backup job, I'm going to call it Outlook. Uh, there's only going to be one source to choose from. And then it's going to say, what do you want to back up? And I'm just going to say, back up all of my, in fact, let's back up all of my uh, entire organization. And then, of course, we need to choose a backup policy, and uh, if it doesn't change that often, let's go for a 12 hours default storage domain. That all looks good. And we'll just hit the Protect button. All right, successfully created the job, and what we should see is after a little delay, I refresh the whole lot. After a little delay, we should see that the backup job is now running. Uh, first run, as always, is going to take a while, and then following runs of protection will be incrementals against that. So I'm going to take a break now. Hopefully, it's not going to take overnight for me to get back and finish this. Well, you can see that some time has passed and that backup job has completed successfully. If we have a look at that run, we see that uh, it took an hour and a half to do the initial backup. And uh, looking at the durations of the two mailboxes, it actually did parallel back backups of the two mailboxes. And that it has pulled logical, what, 2.3 uh, gigabytes of data out over that, that pair. Popping back into the dashboard, we see that uh, our protection runs are, are all looking good. No SLA violations, uh, no health issues, and 
but uh, most of the objects we can see are protected, so that looks all good. Of course, being able to back th things up is all very well, but the, the actual value in the, the, uh, the backup function is to be able to restore. So I'm going to head across into my mailbox, and I have this folder here called underscore destroy me, which is full of some e copies of emails that I don't mind losing, uh, <laughs> since they're actually just all copies. So if I select the destroy me folder, I right click and delete. So I'm going to delete the entire folder. The reason I'm using webmail in here is that that talks directly to the storage in the server. But I will just go and check in another window that Outlook sees that change too. Yep, I can see in my uh, Outlook on my Mac that that folder has been removed from my mailbox. So let's walk through the process of restoring something in Cohesity from uh, Outlook Backup. So I'm going to go Recover, Office 365. Uh, do I want to bring back whole mailboxes? So maybe I want to bring back Alistair's whole mailbox. All right, and I could choose to bring my entire mailbox back at a particular backup point. We've only got one, so I don't get a list. I don't actually want to bring the whole thing back. I will switch in here into the folder view. Now I could choose to search by subject name, so uh, maybe if somebody um, knew that they had particular subjects or mails from particular people or two people or some mailing lists and dates and those kinds of things. Uh, even got a filter for showing only attachments with uh, only emails with attachments, so that's all pretty cool. But what I want to do is bring back my entire underscore destroy me folder. So I'll have a search for that. And of course there's a bunch of the emails that were in that folder, but if I bring the entire folder back. Let's start with just bringing the folder back. Uh, I'm going to recover from the latest backup. I'm going to recover to the original location, not an alternate. Let's go. Let's do that recovery. Submitted successfully the recovery. Task is currently running, and you know what? I can already see in my Outlook view, I can already see the Destroy Me folder back, and in fact I can see the Destroy Me folder just as I hit the refresh in there, was out of order. So I don't have the contents of that folder, I just have the folder itself because that's what I chose. Let's go to Recovery and recover the contents of that folder now. Folder name was underscore destroy me. I'll do a search for that. And now I have a collection of files, or messages in this case, that were in there. Uh, I do rec highly recommend last week in AWS Corey Quinn's newsletter, uh, email newsletter, with um, some really fun analysis of the things that AWS has announced recently. It's a great frequent newsletter. So again, that backup, uh, that recovery is showing as running. And if again I refresh this view, I've already seen it in Outlook that my Destroy Me folder has now got my email messages back into it. So that's pretty cool, the ability to protect the entire um, Office 365 environment and all the data inside it, and to be able to then recover individual mail items, folders, and if we chose to, we could have done a, a recovery of an entire mailbox. So definitely really nice functionality in there to be able to back up and recover your Office 365 data. And I definitely see the um, data retention and, and protection of uh, software as a service applications as being a, a significant potential issue for organizations. So I think this is a, a really useful functionality. So this is a functionality that is coming in a future release of the Cohesity platform. I'm using 6.1.1c and that did require the support team to enable this, this functionality for me. Uh, but in a future release it will be available as a general access part of the user interface. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, stick around for more Cohesity videos over the coming months.